So right now, we have a Power App embedded in Teams using Dataverse for Teams. Don't let Dataverse scare you. It's easier to do Dataverse for Teams than SharePoint. This requires no premium license. Let's get into it and build it. Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Hess. And today I wanted to create a Power App, but I'm gonna do it in Teams. And I wanted to create like a master project list for, you know, maybe a company in a team. So these people will have like your high level PMOs, your project manager, advisors, your PMAs, and they're going to manage and look at all of the projects in the company in the big picture. And one reason that I want to do this from Teams is, you know, Teams already comes with a few out of the box power apps. It comes with issues, reportings, milestones, a lot of project management tools. So I'm gonna create one in a new team. All I would do is come to Power Apps on the left side and I'm gonna say a new app. Now this is just some ideas, but uh, notice here, you're the first person to create an app on here. We'll need to do some things to uh, set up the environment. All right, so they're gonna get things ready. Let's check out the admin center. So if you see here, we have a new environment called Master Project List and it's of type Microsoft Teams and it is a Dataverse environment. So it is Dataverse for Teams, and this is all going to be on your Office 365 license model. No premium connectors. You do not have to pay for the extra Power Apps license to use Dataverse for Teams. All right, so now we can come back to Teams, and I can do New App again, and then I can select that team. All right, so you notice that I am Teams, and I created that Power App. Uh, we're going to call this the project list power app. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is use a data source and that data source is going to be Dataverse for Teams. Don't let this scare you. This is even easier than SharePoint. This is very, very easy to do. So we're going to come over here and we're going to go to our cylinder for our data and we're going to create a new table. And the table name, we're going to call this the project list. All right, and in our project list, we're gonna have some columns. Now the first one is gonna be name. That's gonna be the name of our project. Uh, next, I'm gonna do a project ID. So this data type is going to be of type auto number, business required, and we'll start with one. Number of digits, we'll, we'll increase it to five. So it's five digits now. Next, we'll do description. We need a description of our project. So new column, it's gonna be rich text, a description. Next, I need some kind of KPI, some kind of key performance indicator. I'm going to say this is red, yellow, green. There may be even other colors that we could add to it, maybe purple, the project's on hold. But we'll call it project status, okay? And this is going to be a choice field, and the choices will be green, yellow, red, and then we'll do on hold, and then maybe anticipated. There we go. And the display name will be project status. And then now for sync with choice, we need to choose that project status here. Project status and we'll hit save. All right, let's do another field. New column, this is gonna be multi-line test. We'll call it risk concerns. Next, I want some more columns. I want the start date. So we'll just say start, date, and date and time, date only is fine with me. New column, end. So maybe I'll fast forward through some of these easy columns. You can understand how I'm creating this data table. All right, so we've completed a table in Dataverse. We'll just let it provision. Now what you could do, and you could be done with all your work right now. You could go to With Data, choose your project list, and you could be finished. We could say this done. Let's go ahead and publish and take a look. So I'm gonna go ahead and publish it in our team. And we'll put it right here in the General tab. Check out our General channel in the tab here. In project lists. We now have a new record. All right, so now I have some data in here. I have four different projects. You notice the auto number that's going in here. If I wanted to edit, I could just come to the edit tool and start editing. If I want to delete, I can go to the delete tool and start deleting. So literally, I have a complete power app if I wanted to. All right, but I decided I don't want to use that out of the box functionality. I want to create my own app. So I'm going to do new canvas app, tablet form, and I'm going to create a brand new app under the same name. Okay, so I wanna create my own Power App here. In order to do this, I'm gonna start with containers, a horizontal container and a vertical container. First, let's resize this. And then we're gonna do another container 
a vertical container, goes inside there. I want it to be the full height. And for each of the containers, for height, I'm gonna do parent.height and parent.width. And this is just gonna resize it for, you know, whatever type of uh, device you're using to resize the Power App so it fits correctly. Parent.width. And I'm gonna do that on all my containers. Right now I only have two. Okay, so in this container, what do I want? I want a nice large view of all my projects. So I want a gallery of my project list. And right now there's only, you know, name and, and the ID in there. I'm gonna make this smaller. Okay, so you can see here I have container one, container two, and gallery one. I'm gonna add another container here. Insert a container. And this one I want to be horizontal. And then I'm gonna move it up, reorder it to the top. And the gallery, I want it to be seven. Let's see, there we go. So I'll have some buttons up here. Oh, minimum height. So here, the minimum height, I'm gonna make it 50. How about that? Or maybe a little less, how about 40? Okay, this gallery will make this 10. There we go. Now I've resized it. Now I'm gonna do Pretend this is Excel or SharePoint. I'm gonna create some labels across here. And in the gallery, I want to expand it all the way. But also remember in this container here, I have it as container seven, we want to do parent.height, parent.width. Probably don't need to do height, but we'll do it for now anyways. So I have one label in here. I'm gonna add a few more labels, insert label, Label. So I'm gonna select all my labels and over here, flexible width, I'm gonna turn that on and change the minimum width. All right, so I turned that on and turned it to 200. So it looks like we have space for five labels. Let's see if we can add a couple more in here. Let's insert another label, insert another label, and let's make sure that we turn on flexible width and adjust that, minim adjust that minimum width. All right, so right now I have seven labels in here. So first we're gonna do title. And then let's see what else we want. How about project manager? Percent complete, project status, project phase, start and finish. Now, if you wanna add more in here, if you wanna show the risks, if you wanna you know, show more of that in here, you can do that. Okay, so now let's center all of these. It looks bad uncentered. I know this is a workaround. This is Power Apps. This is new technology is using Teams. I can't get color behind my labels. So I'm just gonna come in here and add a rectangle. You could copy paste from a normal um, Power App instead if you wanted. I'm just gonna come in here and put this here and put it behind everything. So I'm gonna reorder it, uh, send it to the back. And the rectangle, I'm gonna change the color to maybe like uh, some kind of gray, something better. You know, if I really wanted to get good with this, I would do a gradient and we can show that later. And, and so now we see the rectangle there, but now for the width, right? I'm gonna say it's parent.width. Okay, so we have um, it looking pretty decent here. Now let's add the project manager percent complete to the gallery. All right, so the gallery now takes up the entire space. Now we have title here. Let's add it here with the ID number. Okay, then I'm just gonna copy, paste. Copy, paste, center it. I'm just gonna say this item dot. See, I did manager. There we go, manager. I'm just gonna do this all the way down. Percent complete, project status. And I notice I didn't call that finish. I called this end. This was our end date and our start date. And for this item dot start date, we can say this is a date. We can say year and day. So for this, I'll just do the same thing for end date, except for I'll change it all to end. So copy, paste it over, end, end, end. Okay, so now we have our start dates, our end dates, percent complete. We can do things like add you know, an and percent and do a percent. Now, I also want some buttons. I gotta think, okay, where do I want people to click new? Um, new button, I guess, will be at the top here. So we have our container here. We have a gallery. So we're gonna insert another container, horizontal container. Oh, not there though. 
You gotta make sure that you put your container in the right spot. Then we'll move it to the top and the minimum height will be 30. We'll change this one to 30 also. All right, and in this container, we're gonna have a button. So I'll have a button on this container and it's gonna be the full, once again, we want the full align vertical. We're, I'm not gonna do um, space between. I'll put the button all the way over here and we'll kind of resize it to fit how we like. Now you notice my gray uh, bar here is not in the right place. So we'll come to my rectangle. The Y value will be container 7.y. There we go. Perfect. So now that's aligned there. In the end, we'll probably have more things to do, you know, along here. We'll probably have a lot more buttons. Now for the project status, I want to make like a, a red, yellow, green. I think there was purple and another color. And I want to make a stoplight here. So I'm going to insert an image and I'm going to use an SVG. Now you can find these online. Uh, I can put a link in the description of the, uh, in the video. But this is what I did. I went to icons.getbootstrap.com and then I found a circle fill. And so now I took this um, HTML, this SVG, and I'm gonna copy and put this into my Power App. All right, so that code that I found, I'm just gonna paste it in. Now I did manipulate it a little bit. I, I changed the, you know, to single quotes. I added, you know, data image, but I'll, cop I'll put this in the properties of the video. Uh, there's other videos out there from other YouTubers who use SVGs and Power Apps. Now what I wanna do is I wanna do current color, the fill. In between these single quotes, I'm gonna put and this item dot project status. All right, so now I have my different colors. Let's add one more in there. Uh, maybe we'll do that in a little bit, but now we have project status. So on hold is a, a black color. That's fine, that looks great to me. So I just want a little bit smaller. I'll change the width to maybe 12. There we go, that looks like it fits for me. And so I'm gonna get rid of this text field. Where's the text field for project status? All right, so now we have a red, yellow, green stoplight. We could make this way cooler. We, you know, we could make it you know, gradient. We can make it really great looking. Um, but that's what we have right now. All right, so when I hit play, you'll notice that you know, things are not lining up. So I'm gonna go rename each one of these labels to help me out. So label here, label, project manager, I'm gonna do that all the way across. All right, so now that I've labeled all those across, for each one of my labels here, I'm gonna say the X value. Let's see, label proj manager dot X. And for the next one, I'm gonna do the X value, label complete dot X. All right, so now I've matched the X values to my labels when I press play. We can see now that's all lined up. Maybe we want a little space here on the title. Let's go to title. The X value, maybe we'll make it uh, 15. And same with the ID. So that should look good. All right, so we have some space in here. We have a nice looking gallery. Uh, we are gonna wanna change the title bar later on. Now, one thing I wanna do is when I highlight a option, I want the color to change. So I'm gonna go here and on the rectangle that is behind I'm going to go to the fill I'm going to change it to a color and a blue that's that's fine with me we'll do a blue I'm going to say if this item is selected then we're going to leave it white which is 255 else we're going to give it a color so 255 we could even change this to a zero if we wanted to i think i have it backwards so this one here is a zero clear and then 222 here so now when we press play and we select a line item we need to make sure the rectangle is actually parent.width So now it takes up the entire space. So we have a nice start to a gallery in Dataverse for Teams in Power Apps. I'm gonna leave this for here. Next week, I'm gonna do a form. 
and we're going to keep adding on to this until we have a nice power app of multiple projects and we'll have a project list and we'll go more and more into this until we have a really awesome power app that you could uh, you know place on your your project management master projects um, maybe your CIO would like to have this power app where he could get a nice visibility of all the projects in teams so for now I'm gonna leave it here thank you all for watching my name is Andrew Hess I'll see you next week